In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your IDE for OS 10 and iOS development. So we've installed and started the Rad Studio IDE. And over on the doc wiki, there's a page for iOS mobile application development, and it tells you all of the steps and things you need to do to be able to do development. Join the iOS developer program. I'm a member. Uh, acquire a developer certificate. I've got several developer certificates and provisioning profiles that are installed for my devices. So the next step in the ID is to create a connection profile. Before I do that, I need to make sure that I have the platform assistance server on the Mac. That allows the IDE to talk from Windows through TCP IP to the Macintosh somewhere on the network. In my case, I've got a MacBook Pro, so I run a Windows VM for my ID, and then I have my Mac OS X. You'll need to make sure that you prepare your Macintosh, including installing Xcode and the Xcode command line tools and the different versions of OS X and iOS SDKs that you might want to use. So configuring your Mac is making sure you're everything set up, install the platform assistant, make sure it's running, can create the connection profile, and then start add the SDKs and then start doing your development. So let's switch over to my Mac, and I've got Xcode installed, and I updated it to the latest version of Xcode. We can go under uh, Devices, and it'll show me my different devices. I've got the uh, iPhone 6 and the iPad Air 2. I can also look to see uh, what provisioning profiles, and I've got uh, provisioning profiles for doing my development. I saw that I have Xcode installed. I've got my devices connected. There's provisioning profiles for them. The next thing I want to do is make sure in Xcode that I have the command line tools. And there's a doc wiki entry that'll help us make sure that that's the case. We'll go into uh, Xcode preferences and look at the locations preference. And so here we can look at command line tools and we've got the Xcode command line tools also installed. So all is good and I'm ready for the next step, which is to install the Platform Assistant on my Macintosh. And again, the Platform Assistant is the conduit app between the Windows-based ID and the work that needs to be done for OS X development and to get to the SDKs for iOS. So over in our Install folder, there's the PA Server folder. And here we've got a package file. This is the installer of the PA Server. So we'll copy this over to my Macintosh computer. Here it is. We'll double click to open up the package file. Welcome to the PA Service Installer. You have the software agreement uh, language choice. We'll continue. We'll agree to the license. We'll install it on my hard drive on the Mac. I'll take the default location. You can also change the install location. It'll ask for permission to install new software. And now it says, OK, it's in the application folder. So let's go back to the application folder. Here's the PA server. I'll create an alias, and I'll take that alias and copy it and paste it on my desktop. And then we'll start the Platform Assistant server. And it uses port 64211, but we can change that with command line settings or a configuration file. We can bring up the available commands. One of those is to get the IP address of my Macintosh target. We can look at the scratch directory. I'll look at the port number. I didn't change it. It's the default. Let's save that IP address. Copy it to the clipboard. We'll switch back to the IDE. Now we can go under Tools, Options, bring up the Connection Profile Manager, click the Add button. We want to use uh, OS 10 platform. That's where our platform assistant server is there. Uh, I call my uh, computer Samwise Gamgee. We'll put in the IP address. I didn't put a password on the PA server, so everything is OK. We'll test that we can get from our Windows ID to the Macintosh. And now we've got a connection profile for OS X. The next step is to set up the SDKs for OS X and iOS. So we'll go to the SDK Manager in Tools Options, click the Add button, select a platform. We've got our choices of iOS device 32-bit, iOS device 64-bit, iOS simulator, and OS 10. Let's start with OS 10. We'll use that connection profile. And I've got Yosemite installed. I previously had Maverick, so that 
SDK is still there, but I'm using Yosemite now, so I'll choose OS 10 and say yes, and it will cache in the ID the paths to all of the different parts of the SDK, the header files, the library files, and so on, so that it's ready to be used as part of the build process. I'll go back and say, add another platform. We'll use, we'll choose the iOS device 32-bit. Again, go through the connection profile to my Macintosh, get that SDK and make sure it's configured for 32-bit iOS. Click the add button one more time. I want to install iOS device 64-bit. Use the connection manager. So we'll get that SDK. So now I've set up the iPhone the 32-bit and 64-bit device. While we're at it, let's go and select the simulator platform, get the connection. We've got the simulator. Make sure that target is, uh, is set up and configured. And you only need to do this once when you first do a setup, local file caching of where the paths are for the different files, for the different targets that you're interested in. You can also add additional frameworks. If you have new path items over on your Macintosh for other kinds of frameworks, you can click this button and add the path for those. You can also delete and reset paths, and you can even save the path as a default. Now, if you update something on the Macintosh for, or the support for different iOS device versions, you can always go back and hit update local cache for each of the targets here in the update local cache. Uh, you can delete and re-add uh, the configurations and the local cache files. All right, so once we've done that, now we can test to make sure the configuration is working for OS 10 and for iOS 32-bit and 64-bit. So we'll say File New, Multi-Device Application, Delphi or C++. Choose a blank application. Let's go and uh, create a view for iPhone 4.7, which is my uh, iPhone 6. And let's create a view also for uh, iPad. Go back to our master view and uh, choose that iPhone 4.7. Let's put a button down. Notice it has the style of iOS, that flat style. Let's go and set the text property to click me. Let's double click on the button. So we'll add code here for the button text when we click on it. Uh, to dump out the size of native int, the tag property for visual controls in FireMonkey is of type native int, and tape native int will take on whatever the native integer is for each of the platforms. So on Win32, it's four bytes. On Win64, it's eight bytes. On iOS 32, it'll be four bytes. On iOS 64, it'll be eight bytes. So we're going to dump out the size of uh, of the tag property, and we'll add uh, bytes to the string. All right, so button text, when we click on the button, it's going to get size of native int equals uh, the number of bytes. Let's go back to the form designer. We'll make the button wider so that that string can fit. Let's go over to our iOS 32-bit device, uh, make sure that we have uh, them connected. We'll choose my iPhone. Now, after we've made all the configurations, we've built our starting application, there's one other thing we need to do, and this was a change that came for iOS in 8.1.3, is that you need to be able to provision the application and select the right certificate as part of your application and make sure that that's built in and deployed along with your app. In the past, you could just have these anonymous apps, but Apple now has part of the application bundle for iOS to see who is the developer and make sure it's a trusted app. So the way we've done that is you go under project options and you go to the provisioning tab. And for each of the different devices, either iOS 32-bit or iOS 64-bit or all configurations of iOS device, you can choose your mobile provisioning profile and the ID will talk through the PA server and see what provisioning profilers are available and let you select one. You can also leave it auto where the ID will choose the right provisioning profile for the right device. If we choose production, then we can see, oh, here's my distribution. Most cases, you'll just uh, have auto, auto. So we'll set that 
And then if we hit run and compile and link the application, it'll include my developer ID as part of the deployed app. And there's project one showing up. There's the splash screen. And then I can click the button and it says size of native int is four bytes. Yes, because it's an iOS 32-bit application. Let's go back and choose iOS device 64-bit. And again, I've got my target devices. I'll choose my iPhone. Let's go and build an iOS 64-bit version of the application. Now it's running the compiler to compile a 64-bit app, linking a 64-bit app. That'll show up in iOS device 64 under our project folder. And now it's going to deploy the 64-bit application. So here's project one. There's the splash screen. I'll click the button and it says size of native int is eight bytes. I'm using the tag property. That's a 64-bit application. Uh, so pointers are four bytes in 32-bit iOS and eight bytes in 64-bit iOS. Native int is either four bytes or eight bytes, depending on the target that you build. As of February 1st, Apple will only accept new apps in the App Store that are either 64-bit apps or combined 32 and 64-bit apps. So we provide that support by a compiler option under Project Options. If you're compiling Delphi, then you can go down here and set an option, Generate iOS Universal Binary File, which is a 32-bit and 64-bit ARM. You turn that on. Same thing if you have a C++ target. So let's build a C++ uh, multi-device FireMonkey application. Let's choose uh, Master Detail and then go under Target Platforms. Here's C++ iOS device 32-bit and iOS device 64-bit. And there's our target devices, 64-bit. Let's choose iPhone. Go under Project Options. And under C++ Compiler Advanced, there's Generate iOS Universal Binary File ARM v7 and ARM64 for C++. If you have a mixed C++ and Pascal files in your project, it'll fire off both the Delphi compilers and the C++ Builder compilers for 32-bit and 64-bit iOS for those two processors. And now we can uh, say Run, and it'll compile our C++ example. Notice in this case, it compiled twice. The 32-bit version linked it, the 64-bit version linked it, and then the ID will do the bundling of 32-bit and 64-bit and deploy that to my device, or if I choose my configurations to be ad hoc or the App Store, then we'll have the right application for a 32-bit and 64-bit world. Go back over here. There's my Master Detail app showing up. Here's the splash screen, and now I've got the uh, Master Detail application with the multi-view component where I can use the little drawer, have it slide out, choose different options, go between different employee information. I can do the same development on my tablet. We've got uh, the views, so here's my iPad view, here's my uh, iPhone 4.7 view, and again, we can go back to the master view as well. We can bring up the multi-device preview, and it will show me all the different targets for the app. And now we'll go and build an iPad version by targeting my iPad Air 2 64-bit processor. And we'll launch it, bring up the splash screen, and now we've got the multi-view working since it's got the real estate it can give us the master list and the detail list and we can switch to the different uh, employees or select them from the list so the last thing we need to do to make sure that our id is configured for mac and ios development is to select the os 10 target platform let's make sure the P server is running. Yes, it is. We've got our Mac OS 10 device. Let's hit uh, compile and run. It'll compile our master detail application in C++, link it and deploy it to our OS 10. And here's the application running over on OS 10 with the employees and information about them. We now verified that our iOS device 32 and 64-bit are working. We've got our OS 10 working. 
and we're ready to do our Macintosh and iOS development in both Delphi and C++ Builder.